It's a brilliant new edition of Hall of Fame right here on City TV. When it gets to this time of the week, you know you have to sit back, relax, and for the next 60 minutes, I take you on a journey into a personality that you love alive. We get to hear their views on issues, get them to show a different side of themselves, and of course, share a few laughs right here on the show. This is Hall of Fame. My name is AJ Akwako Sapon, and we're live from the studios of City TV right here in Adabraka. Today, my guest is someone I'm really excited to have a conversation with because she is beautiful she is uh creative she's able to churn out hit after hit she is a wife and a mother and also manages to do all of this as a career a business owner she owns one of the best spas i think in entire Accra, and manages to do all of this in 24 hours and how does she do it in my 24 hours i'm even thinking like am i even doing enough but she is doing everything and killing it in the game as well i have a conversation with her i'll probably drop a few hints and you may know who i'm about to have a conversation with but you have to stay tuned because right after this i'll get into a fantastic conversation with the one and only Becca. you tune in to hall of fame wine here on city tv yes my guest today is the one and only very beautiful uh owner of Cora spa she is a hit uh creator she is a wife and a beautiful mother as well, and manages to do all of this and still look beautiful. Yeah, I don't know how she does it. The one and only Becca is in the studio. Hi, Becca. Hi, hey, It's been a long time. I know. It's <laughs> nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. Firstly, nice you, you look amazing, by Thank the way. Um, and I want to actually find for me, how do you define your style of music? Well, I will actually go back in, into time and say that my style of music, whether it's modified or it's modern general music, I would say I'm primarily a high life artist, mm. fused with a bit of Afrobeat, you know, okay. um, and but I'm quite diverse as well. Because if you listen to my songs, yep. I try to um, do all sorts of genre because um, as a creative person, you'd like to explore. But primarily, I would say I'm a high life artist. I like that, yes. okay. Now, uh, let's start all the way from the beginning. How did you find your voice? So some people say they find it in the church. Others say, oh, they were freestyling with their friends and then they managed to <laughs> know that they could sing or whatever it is. How did you know that you could, <laughs> in fact, have the pipes that would let everyone stop and pay attention? Well, I... I always sang, honestly. Okay. Um, I would pick a book at home. I'll pick a Bible. I'll just start like singing it. Okay. And I came from a house that's full of musicians. My father sang in the choir. My mother sang in the choir. Ah. My brothers were all like singing at home all the time. So you wake up in the morning, there's Luther Vandross or an Amachi Dede or Lumba playing. So nice. you grew up in a house that was full of music. Now, how I found my voice was quite interesting. Um, I mean, growing up, I thought I was going to be a lawyer because that's what everybody wanted, wanted me to be. Right. However, I knew that I had a passion for something else and it was on the creative side. I knew I wanted to be a singer. How that was going to happen, I wasn't sure. Yeah, so, I mean, I was going to school, doing what I had to do. Along the way, I just diverted. I said, you know what, I'm going to do child care and education. I'm going to learn psychology, how to deal with kids because I love children as well very much. Everyone that knows me knows that I love children. Mm. Um, so, yes, I did all of that from Ghana. I went to Monistar, Wesley Girls, went to London, went to school, came back. And then when I came back, I happened to, I went somewhere. And then I met my former manager, Kiki Banson. Then uh, Reggie Rockstone, who I'd known for a long time in Mensa, you know, okay, Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Mensa yes. said, I went to school Mensa, I went to one Insta with Mensa. Ah. <laughs> Mensa was like, you know this girl used to sing at assembly? I was like, oh, stop it, stop it, it's not that, it's not that serious. You know, however, I knew deep down that I wanted to sing. So luckily for me, Kiki was standing there. And then Reggie said, oh, come, come, come in Mensa, you know this girl can sing. Kiki was like, oh, come to the studio, come and try something. But I never went to the studio. I didn't mm. go. I mean, it was December. I came to chill. <laughs> you know, it was December. I came to chill. I'm like, why shouldn't we go into the studio? As much as I don't want to go, I was so distracted. But you know what? I kept meeting Kiki everywhere I went from that day. Wow. That was so weird. Like, you go, and and that's how it is. It's like looking for a car. Yes. And once you see the car, you keep seeing it and seeing Fate. it and seeing it. Yeah. And that's how it was. So I met him. He said, you know, just come and try something in the studio. When I went to the studio, there was already the instrumentals was already laid down. He said, you want to sing something? Try and sing something. And I said, okay. I've been searching all my life. That's how you like to me came about. So <laughs> that is just how everything started. And so when that started, I said, you know what? 
this is like an opportunity for you that God is just telling you that this is the time for you because you always wanted to do this. Yeah. And as much as everybody thinks you're going to become a lawyer or you're going to be do something else, this is what you always wanted to do. So mm -hmm. it's like just going back. So I just grabbed it. You know, we send a song out there for people to listen and you lied to me, it became a hit and my career just started. You know? Wow. So that is really the journey through it, you know. I came <laughs> for holidays, really, in December holidays to come and chill. Waiting for thirty first night. Can you imagine? <laughs> and then you and ended then, up getting a whole career like, out and of it. Everything came out of it. Everything. So My at dream. that point in time, you decided that no, I'm not going back. I'm going to stay right here. Exactly. And then, oh yeah, I decided, and that's <laughs> where the trouble started. I decided. I told my father, I said, you know what? I'm not going back to go. I'm not going back to school in the UK. I'll stay here. I'll go to school because I want to do music. My father said, I've been paying school fees. I've been doing that. You're telling me you're coming to do music. So everything just started. I stayed after that, you know. And then I started doing music. I started recording. You lied to me. Came and then Dark and Die and then Sugar and the album. So that's how the journey really started. Wow. Yes. Okay. So, um, at someone who was obviously based outside the country, why didn't you decide, you know what, if it's going so great for me in Ghana, why not replicate my success in the UK music industry? Well, I, I knew that this is where I came from. Mm -hmm. You know, I understood music here more. I had family here more. And also, I wanted to be a Ghanaian artist, not a UK, a Ghanaian based, based UK, UK artist. artist. Okay. I wanted to be a Ghanaian artist because I realized this, that I even at that time, I knew that African music, Ghanaian African music was crossing the border more. Mm. And so I just thought, you know, why don't you see, because you understand, you understand the music here more. You understand how the system works more True. as much as... Things may be more constructive there. You understand it here more. Plus, you have family. And also, there was an opportunity for somebody to produce me here and manage me. And I had a record label here. Okay. So I just thought, you know, well, let's just build it from home. However, the idea was to, is to, of course, for everybody to go there in the long run and also expose your music there. But I think starting from here has done that justice anyway. Honestly, it has. Now, still at the beginning of your career, yes, I mean, yes, you yes. have a <laughs> massive hit with Dark and Dark, yes, which I did. Yes. was everywhere. And we all like, you lied. To oh me, gosh. and I don't feel for every girl that was heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> so, how was it then, as a newbie coaching coach in the Ghanaian music industry? Mm -hmm. Was the industry open? to someone with your talent then? Well, 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 I think that I was one of the lucky ones, honestly. Yeah. There might have been certain things that I wasn't, you know, too comfortable with, i.e. when I would go for every show, I'd probably be the only woman on the bill. Mm -hmm. And having a hit like You Like To Me, it was every stage, you know, I was on every stage. And I'd be the only woman standing. And that for me was not was not a problem. It was just like a challenge because you just felt like, oh my God, where are my other female colleagues? Sure. You know, however, I think that those are the things that motivated me and pushed me to work harder and harder and harder and harder as a female singer. And so I won't even talk about you know yeah, that the, aspect okay. you know however i think that for everybody in the beginning you always have that you know that notion of am i going to make it am i not going to make true, it so those were some of the things that were like always running through my head always running through my head but anybody that knows me knows that i don't give up like it does not matter aj what you say about me i will get up in the morning and i'll do exactly what i want i'm human i'm gonna have you know i'm gonna hurt somehow or feel a certain way but i'm never deterred okay that's, like that's that. not me you won't get me at all i like that i'm not gonna be deterred so now, continuing in your rise in the industry then, coming out with it, do you feel a pressure to replicate the success of your first hit? Uh, that, oh, can I even get a song as great as that? Even though, obviously, throughout the line, you've realized that, yeah, you have oh, 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 clearly over, uh. gone over the boundaries of your first uh, hit. But did you feel a pressure initially in the beginning to replicate your success? Yes. You do definitely feel a pressure, you know what I mean? And that pressure is up to you to make it positive or negative, mm -hmm. you know, because pressure can really suppress you and make you just, you know, do things you're not even supposed to do as a human, you know, i.e. do all the things in the back to make sure other people don't rise. However, the pressure for me was good, you know, because okay. I had set a benchmark for myself and I needed to go higher and higher every time, you know, because I just thought, you know what, that's not where, that's not the ceiling for me. I want to rise and rise. So, yes, you lied to me was like a... It was a challenging time for me because I knew that, well, you can you don't want to be a nine you know nine day wonder you know you just come in and you just go and so that you know as much as being grounded you know just was that you know thing that made me want to work hard and push myself harder one hundred percent you know there's no point of doing music and you making a hit and thinking I'm just done let me just sit down and relax yeah. no you know you need to keep producing so it definitely was pressure and for me that was good pressure because. 
if it wasn't for that pressure, I don't think that I would continue doing music. I would just be relaxed going to sit in my daddy's house and yeah. my legs, you know. So. <laughs> now, in the uh, industry, over the last 10, 15 years, uh, it's, it's been a very long and very fulfilling career. Mm. Tell me some of the highlights that have been in... Uh, First, you walk me through the first album, okay. and then the subsequent albums, yes. and what inspired each one. <laughs> well, the first album was a lot of ideas from different people, because it was an introduction into the industry, and I wasn't too, um, I wasn't conversant what was going on in True. the industry. I didn't know much, and so this was the time where a lot of influence was in there, from You Lie to Me, to, to Sugar, to Daka Da, to all the songs was a lot of influence. Um, but it was still good because now I was looking for my brand. I was looking for what I stood for in the music industry. Mm -hmm. I was trying to mold myself and see if I could fit in whatever peg I was going to fit in. True. Um, and, and so that was a learning experience for me. You know, so most of the songs on, if you listen, were very um, was a specific way. You know, it was solemn and easy, and you know, songs that you you just sit down and absorb. However, when it got to the second album, you know, um, time for me. I upped it up a bit, you okay. know. Then there was mid tempo and songs that people could really dance to. There was a new version. I was, I was, you know, I got to know myself a bit more, and so I was exploring more creatively. And I was also more, in, much more involved in the creation of the album. Time okay. for me, you know. So that was also a beautiful phase for me because I was more involved, you know. And then after that, it was unveiling which I was off my label. And so that one, I was like, ah, oh, let me explore every avenue. <laughs> let me do whatever I want to. Let me do rap. Let me do reggae. Let me do... And that's what has every... A lot of artists in there. Because I was also like... At that time now, I was like... The word is not as safe, independence, but I was quite independent, you know. And so I was like more like, oh, yeah, this is me. Let me put everything in it. All the thoughts and ideas over the years that, you know, you'd have, of course, a label. A label Granted, always wants to team yeah. you, make sure you're doing the right in thing. In the right specific way, yeah. Exactly. Let me just let it all out. Let's see what happens. And so that was the unveiling album. It was beautiful, 13 track. Yep. I had a gospel on there, you know, I had different kinds of having a wash on there. You know, so that was a different phase in it. It was evident, you know, everybody really, yeah. was <laughs> And so I've had three albums in my 13 years career, you know, so um, that's the face. Now you're working been, on a new one. So. Okay. And I, I, I actually really look forward to it. And hopefully before you leave, you give us a bit more hint about the new one. Yeah, 100%. I like that. Now, um, as a female in the industry, and picking off of what you said, being the only one at some yeah. point uh, amongst the boys, do you feel the industry pits females against each other? And have you had any kind of stories to tell during your 13-year career? There's always been stories to tell, not just women in the industry, but women in general. Mm. You know, I don't have to be in the same industry with someone for there to be competition. True. You know, competition is fantastic. However, I think it's the negativity of the competition and the level at which it is that makes it a problem for especially women. It's a natural thing. You know, you, like women are in the room together. <laughs> they will barely talk if they don't know each other. But the men, you like, they are best yeah. friends all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that it's the nature of women generally. And so well, let's come into the industry now. It is because naturally people think they're competing competing against each other. Survival of the fittest. Now, everybody's trying to survive. And so there's a notion of, I am probably bigger than this person. I want to be bigger than this person. Somehow, when I, but when I grew, I've grown up in the industry and I've realized certain things as well that a lot of times people, myself, people don't even know how to approach me because they don't know how big guy is going to react, especially the younger artists, my younger sisters mm -hmm. who are coming up. They feel like, oh, this is the perception of Becca in the back and that's what people think of Becca. And so we don't know if that's how she is. Right. Ah, I don't want to go close to her. I don't want to know. And I'm going to give an example, typical example. I've been in so many places where young artists will see me and I'm sitting down and they won't even greet. Yes. But you know what? I am the sort of person that would always smile at you. And I think when I do this sometimes, and this is how I got to know that the problem was probably me, hmm. you know? Not, not doing it intentionally. It wasn't, it wasn't a conscious thing, you know what I mean? But sometimes but when you're at rest, yeah, they don't know the how. Exactly. Okay. They don't know how to do it. Because um, when I approach when I say, hi, how are you guys doing? They're like, oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> I didn't know. So I realized, that, oh my God, that's an issue there. You're probably too stiff, Becca, you know? Losing up. Let them feel like you are reachable, you know, they can communicate to you. Right. And so I have made a conscious effort and so the premiere that I just did recently, I invited I saw everyone, everyone was there. there. Yeah. And it was so much fun. We did, they didn't come there just to watch the, you know, the video and go home. We communicated, we sat down, we drank, we danced. Everybody had so much fun. And so for me, I, thought, I think 
women really were pitched against each other yeah. because people say that that is the nature of women. Well, if that is the nature of women, some of us are going to change it. And we, we together, we're having conversations to make sure that that stops, you know, because I'm telling you, women have to work harder, yes. much more harder than yes. the men do, you know, yes. maybe like five times more than the men do to achieve anything. Absolutely. And so it takes two of us to make that happen. You know, and so my sisters and I have sat down, we've communicated, and we're going to make it happen. I like yeah. that. I really do. Yeah. Now, describe the transition uh, moving from, because you, you have been with Kiki for quite a while. Eight years, The transition yes. from moving away from him to now getting onto a new label yes. like Xylophone. Yes. So when I trans my transition was quite interesting, because when I, when, tr when I transited, right, it was um, eight years of being with Kiki, and then I had a, about a year in, or two years break. You know, that been doing songs myself. Wow. So a song like Now Wash and Oh, we're not on um, Zion. Okay. Yeah, I was just independent at that time. And Kiki for me was, you know, I, I would say he did most of the work because to build a brand is not easy. True. It, it requires a lot of investment, time, patience, you know, growth. And so... Um, he made it quite easy for Xylophone, you know, to come in, to and, come yeah. in, you know, and Xylophone will definitely 100% accept that. Um, different work ethics, you know, um, Xylophone was a bigger label, you know, with um, um, more like, you know, investment, it, investment yeah. and everything, you know, that's what makes it quite different. However, I think that um, I can never compare Kiki's work to Xylophone's work, you mm. know, because he was the beginning of everything, okay. you know, so everyone had a different role to play in my life. So it was a smooth transition because I was matured. I had already built a beautiful brand for myself, mm. you know, and, you know, and people had already gotten to know Becca. So I just transited quite easily into Xylophone and they took it over and we worked for a couple of years as well. Okay. I like that. Now going into your style of music, um, the, with, and I will go into I Do, which which is an amazing song, by mm. the way. But from er, the point of like Nawaj and now flowing into Nayu, it seems yeah. to be a, a certain influence, Nigerian influence mm. largely. Mm. Is it an avenue to break into the Nigerian market or is it perhaps, uh, obviously you're, you're married to marriage. Nigerian and all that. Is it is it by marriage that's giving you that sort of influence <laughs> of sound into your own personal no, it's, it's not. it's not by marriage at all. I think that I, I 100% love my husband, love all Nigerians, <laughs> guys. Just remember that I love you. However, that's not the reason. It's a conscious effort. Now, I think that we realize that a lot of Nigerians are even using our language now. True. And we're playing their songs 24 yes. hours on radio. Every time I listen to radio, I hear Nigerian, Nigerian music I, more. I, I least, not, at least one at song least in an hour. Yeah. Oh, exactly. So... That is a conscious effort, you know, because I think that we're so close. The population is quite huge. The market is quite big for an artist like me. Right. And so we are 33 million. There are over 150 million. And so sometimes it's just making people relate to you. Um, and the reason why I'll say it's not because of my husband is because when I was singing, you didn't make me laugh. I know go feed you away. Yes. You didn't make me smile. I know go feed you all I would say. I was doing that way before I even met my husband. That's probably like some eight years back before I met my husband. So I think that it's always been something that's been a part of me. It's however more evident and obvious now because I'm married to a Nigerian yeah. man, but it's, it's a business decision. You know, so I tried to sound Nigerian, I was trying to sound Ghanaian. I tried to even use words like Yebo, which is South African, so it crosses into the South African market. So I'm about to, you know, you know, temper, you know, explore with the East African markets as well. I like that. Exactly. You've always been someone who has uh, seen into future collaborate or, or collaborations with other parts of the continent 100%. and across the world. Yeah. Um, Ghanaians largely have been, oh, our music is not as accepted across the borders mm. as we are easily getting in music into the country. Do you feel Nigeria or the South African market or whichever market in, in, in Ghana, or sorry, in Africa or across the world is not actually open to Nigerian, sorry, it's Ghanaian mean. sounds? Mm. Or is it more of a thing we don't market our music enough? Okay, there's, there's two parts of this. Now, the first thing is this, that Nigerians are Nigeria Nigeria is a huge market okay now even if 1 million people are playing your song okay and and the and the funny thing is that every part of the world has a lot of Nigerians and Nigerians are 100% proud of themselves their yes. heritage and who they are so that is that face you know now let's go into music let's go into music marketing promotion and all that Nigerians do the most you know, they do the most. Yeah. Let me go back. No, let me just go back. Let me, let me rewind. Now, the first question was this. Our music is accepted. Don't get it twisted. Highlight music. 
um, Afrobeat, Afropop, you know, hip life, everything mm. is coined out of that music. Right. And that is the kind of sound that Nigerian counterparts and South Africans, a lot of people are, you know, tapping Sampling, into. Yeah. There is always an element of high life, which is authentic Ghanaian music in there. So your music is accepted to the extent where people are actually stealing, really stealing, your, stealing words. your words, <laughs> stealing your sound. So yeah. don't get that twisted. Our music is accepted. Trust me, when, when Nigerians hear our music, they go crazy. And they learn a lot from us, 100%. Because mm. I've been in the studio with a lot of them. And I know how much, you know, when you say something or that the high level, when you're playing a string somewhere, they go crazy about it. Now the second part, okay. You want your music to be known, right? You want it to be out there. How are you promoting your sound? Mm. Now, I use Mr. Easy all the time. Mr. Easy can sit home and feed off just music streams and downloads. Because that young man has plugged his music on every single app. He's researched, right? He has done a lot of talk. He's had a lot of conversations. We YouTube is the lowest paid, you know, <laughs> platform, streaming, avenue, streaming yeah. avenue. Trust me. But people just look at the number there and they forget that there's iTunes, there's, there's Apple Music, there's, there's iTunes TV, video. And people, I think I'm probably the second or third from Ghana who has their video wow. there. And that is, the avenue is there. So you're making mini music money from there. People, iTunes is where the most money comes from. Mm. Aside that, there's all the Deezers and the Uduex and, and Aftown. And Aftown, and all those ones, yeah. Aftown is like huge now, you know. There's Boomplay. There's a lot of platforms, not just in Ghana, but all around the world. But all we need to do is do what we need to Put, do a lot of search. I don't think we like to read a lot and do a lot of search. Charlie. We're too comfortable. Okay? Nigerians do that a lot. South Africans do that a lot. Yeah. You know? And they push their songs there. So that, that's where there's, that's distribution and that's promotion, mechanical distribution and promotion as well when it comes to, we don't monetize all those things. We just let it go. You know, sometimes people go to the mall in Dubai and they're playing Ghanaian songs. How are you monetizing that? Yeah. Do you know you can make money out of that? So that's where that comes from. TV, radio, you know, clubs, pubs, all those things. You should be making money off that. But because we do not know the avenue to go to, we do not explore it. You know, so that's another part of it. And once that music is on the platform, automatically, somebody, Pandora is not in this part of the world, mm. right? Um, Tidal is not here. But somebody in the America or somewhere in the corner somewhere who has access to that one will download it because they'll see it, mm. you know? So I think that we should put a bit more effort into, you know, the promoting and distribution of our music, mm. you know? So Ghana music is, trust me, they love your music. They, they actually want to buy your music if you give it to them for free. <laughs> You know, so, okay, yeah. now, uh, before I, I, I go on a quick break, speaking of Ghanaian music, what about the Ghanaian music industry, industry as a itself. whole? Do you think it's structured in a way that benefits the artists? Well, um, I think there's a lot of work to be done there, mm. honestly. And uh, there's a lot of avenue. There's uh, so much. Um, this is a conversation with the government. Mm. And this is a conversation with ourselves. This is mm. a conversation with Musica and Gamero and all the bodies associated with our music industry. It's so hard to even, you know, want to check how much you're making from certain, you know, avenues in here. Like, you know, I don't know where to go to know that. I mean, where, where's my royalties? Exactly. Do you understand? I know they send some through mobile money and all those things. You know, apparently. Do you even get enough? I haven't even gotten a mobile money alert. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't even know. And that is the real truth. I haven't gotten a mobile money alert if anything is coming at all. And I got to know that I went for a radio interview and they told me that have I gotten anything from, you know, my royalties from one of the bodies? I said, no, I haven't. You know, they, they have been Gamble paying. And all those things. I said, I have not. Uh, maybe I need to go and find out what it is, but I haven't gotten any money from them. And that's the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just told them, like, let me go and ask, you know, my former management, maybe they're receiving it, but <laughs> they're not, you know. Yeah. So I think that there's so much that we need. They need to just structure things properly. You know, there's no hierarchy. You don't even know where to go to sometimes, you know, because you go there and then everything is just all scattered. It can be done. Why can't we have a um, a whole music city, like a universal? You know, when mm -hmm. you go there, there's platforms where things are subsidized so artists can shoot videos for cheap, where we can actually encourage people to come in and shoot videos. You know what I mean? Yeah. More, probably for a certain amount, if you're paying $10,000, you could be doing $5,000, whereas we can be paying something lesser. And I think that's where government comes in. Do you mm -hmm. understand? The monies that are allocated for these, um, you know, the, the creative arts, I really don't know how that is done. Yeah. I feel like they should actually have conversations with people who have knowledge and understanding of what we actually want and require in the industry. Sit down with us, have conversations and see what comes out of it. 
you know, because there's always a budget, but we don't know what happen really happens to the budget. True. Yeah, and True. that is the real truth. I love that. I'm having an amazing conversation with the one and only Becca right here on Hall of Fame. We'll be right back after this and then get into more with Becca as she's in the hot seat. And you're tuned in to Hall of Fame right here on City TV. My name is AJ Aquago Slapon. I'm having an amazing conversation with the songstress, entrepreneur, and all round superwoman, uh, Becca, in the hot seat right now. And going back into the conversation, so uh, you're currently not with Xylophone anymore. No, 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 not um, where, what label? Are you on a label now? Are you creating your own label? What is the conversation going on there? I've always had a label. Okay. You know, but I just. I've always had a label, however, as an artist, I also thought that, you know, it's okay for me if I'm not ready to manage myself, mm -hmm. you know, be with another label. And so my label, um, together, uh, my husband and I owe it, you okay. know, yes, now, is State of Mind Entertainment. We nice. it. So I'm on that label. Um, I'm just waiting, you know, to see what happens, you know, because I'm looking to sign an artist as well in the long run, because I... I personally feel like as an artist I can't sign an artist you know cause <laughs> there's always competition and yeah. that's the truth that's a mistake a lot of people make you know because no matter what you know you think oh my god I need to be on that stage as well I need to do this so if somebody's coming for an artist or that's an opportunity you, you barely want to give to that yeah. person so I wanted to get to a certain point where I feel like this is time for me to lay back you know what I mean sit back relax enjoy the ride and you then know? allow others and to, allow yeah, others to okay. you know that you are not going to get your gigs because 100% even in, you know um, every you know even Chaka Chaka and Ko, they're always mm -hmm. performing Daddy Lumba. He's not as active in in, on, in the studio trying yeah. to do, but he's he's getting just, money every time. Just doing so the just old do, hits, yeah. That's what you want to do. So I want to get to that point where I feel like, you know, you know, in what day, in the state of mind, if you are not ready to quit and you quit, you're always going to have a problem with your artist. So that is going to come in. So I'm on that label. As I was with Xylophone for two years, obviously, and then the contract is ended, and okay. that's why I'm on my label. But if my label comes on and, you know, it's good, you yeah, <laughs> share my vision with me, which is more important than the money. Resource is important, but the vision is more important for me as an artist because my career has been built to a certain point, so the label needs to know how to push it up to another Absolutely. level. Absolutely. Now, with Xylophone, was it a mutual conversation that, okay, you know, I think it's time after two years, we're just going to end our our. Uh, uh, legal contract or something of that sort? No, I mean, um, this, this, of course, we all know what happened, you know, recently. And so um, I, I would have thought that after Xylophone, I'd probably have another negotiation, sit down with them and sign more. You know, I don't know what's going to come up, you know, however, because things happened after the two years, I just had to just lay back from the Xylophone. That was really what happened with Xylophone. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, Xylophone was a subsidiary of the parent company, Men's School, mm -hmm. and with the recent happenings that's been going on uh did you at any point okay what was your opinion when you saw the headlines or what was going through or what was the state of mind when you saw the headlines and the whole brouhaha wow. going on with men's gold i really just thought you know what i just hope this ends pretty soon because yeah. um not only did i know the owner of men's gold and what the sort of person that he was very good person kind-hearted person i was also thinking about the plight of people there whose monies are there right. and so for me it was just a, 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 a the thought of let's let's this should just end very quickly so people are happy honestly and that mm -hmm. was the truth because i'm not the sort of person i don't judge people very much I always observe and watch because you never know somebody's circumstance and situation sure. and what made certain things arise. And so I try as much as possible not to, you know, crucify people when I don't know the in-depth and the story to things. But one thing I could tell you 100% was that I just said, God, please let this issue be resolved as soon as possible. There are some people that throw around the word um, Ponzi scheme. Do you at any point in time or do you think it's just a misunderstanding or perhaps a witch hunt in any way or form? Honestly, at, at that time, I was heavily pregnant, and that's the truth. Okay. As much as I was paying attention because it was, uh, you know, my, my record label, you know, the boss, um, I was also, you know, being very careful Absolutely. in certain things. But 100%, you know, a lot of people said so many things, you know, about the whole thing. But I believe in justice as well. Sure. And I just thought, let's just serve as course, you know. Whatever the situation is, I just hope that it is resolved properly so that everything just... And lays low. I like that. Okay. Now, what plans have you put in place to get your brand, Brand Becca, out across the borders of Ghana and across the world? 
Uh, there's nowhere and there's no <laughs> platform in this world that you won't find Becca's songs on. In fact, when you go on iTunes now, I have my banner there, you know, so you nice. can listen to the song. You know, yes, I do. It's it's that is how it's supposed to be. You know, putting my songs out there, having conversations with people in a, in Europe, you know, in Americas and in different parts of the world, in Asia as well, because there are people there who want your music. We just haven't spoken to them yet, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, made, making a conscious effort you know, to have conversations with these people because they want your music. You know, I there's like something that. called world music. You know, so everybody in every part of the world, Asia is huge. They want to listen to your music, but they do not know about you unless you reach out to them. And so I'm exploring all avenues. I'm having conversations with agents all across the world like to make sure that our music goes there. Listen, like I've been doing this for 13 years. I have gotten married. I have a child now and everything. I have enough time to be able to push my music wherever I wanted to go. I have enough time to travel wherever I want to go to. Well. Now, on marriage, uh, how has marriage or married life or perhaps even motherhood changed your sound? Uh, motherhood hasn't changed my sound. It's changed my mentality. Tell me about that. Life. <laughs> life is interesting. Mm. You know, when you, um, when you go through that phase, you understand the real beauty of life. Okay. And I tell people all the time that you understand what love really is, you know, unconditional love, mm. what re that really is. And I know people biblically will talk about God's love being unconditional, which it is. But I'm telling you, I do not understand how you cannot love someone that you birthed. Absolutely. You know, it's so beautiful. And then you realize that certain things in life just doesn't matter anymore, honestly. You know, your focus is on one thing, making sure that your child, you know, is healthy your child is looked after and everything changes for you. Now you wake up in the morning, it's not just about your nail polish and how beautiful <laughs> it is. It's about making sure that how she has she eaten today, you know, so your life just, everything just changes for you and that's the beauty about, you know, everything. And when it comes to sound, you know, now it just, it just, it, I, I don't know. I didn't think having a baby has tamed me at all. I mean, True. I did the song with Shatawali. You know? <laughs> it's not tamed me at all. Okay. It, just, it just made me feel like you need to, you know, just explore more, do things, you know, yeah. be free, be free spirited, enjoy your life, be happy. That is what life is really about, you know, because I mean, what what else do you want in life but happiness? And you know? That's so, true. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's all, all it of is. It. <laughs> that's all it is. You know, there can be money and everything. A lot of people have so much money but and they're sick happy. and yeah. they're not happy, I'm telling you. So it's not just about money, you know. It's about finding the deep down the depth of your heart, the happiness that nobody can give you but yourself. I like that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's some people that say that a woman can't have it all, or you can't have it all at the same time. Right. You, can't, you can't balance marriage and children <laughs> and yeah. career all at the same time. I think they, I think that's that, that's a very archaic view. I think we can do it all AJ, and at the same time. Yeah. But uh, as someone who's living that, yeah. is have you been able to juggle everything at the right pace, or must always something always give at some point? Something must always give in life. Mm. However, there's something called balance as well. True. So it's up to you and how well you're able to balance things in your life. I have a husband, I have family. We always talk about the three, music, husband, child. Yes. But remember, you have external family as well. True. You have family who are looking up to you. Who you have a to business. Visit. You have a business. I have a business. I have a huge spa. And I, I, I just try as much as possible to, to give everybody their time. There's some of them that are more important than others, like my daughter and my husband. Right. Do you understand? They're more important, honestly, than my career. One hundred percent. I'll give anything for the two of them. Okay. I also have family that I love so much. Do you understand? So I think that it's just that good balance. Do you understand? Making sure that you position yourself in a way that you're not pressured too much. Yeah. Because the, the career can put a lot of pressure on you if you're not careful, because. When you're supposed to take care of your child, you feel like people are in parties and people are having so much fun and you're there and there's new music released every time. and So it can put a lot of pressure on you. Yeah. But trust me, just pace yourself. Pace yourself. And that balance is seamless because like I'm living it. Do you understand? I'm here in the studio. My daughter is at home. She's fine. My husband is there. He's doing his own things, yeah. making calls. He's always like calculating something. <laughs> <laughs> He's always, you know, Dr. Toby's always doing something, you know. And, you know, I have family at home taking care of the baby. I have a nanny as well taking care of the baby. I have two nannies, actually, you know, because I don't want to be tired. So yeah. I just balance. But when I go home, right, my daughter is mine. 
generous than I give it all the time in the world. I check up on her every time I'm on the road. If I'm going for more than three days, she has to go with me. If I'm like traveling, that. so that is more than two days. Or else I, I let everybody, like I call everybody <laughs> to come to the house. You know, I'm telling you, I remember I was traveling for two days to go and shoot the Tiwa video. I called everybody. Grandma, they must, they go must, home. Oh, my sister, sister go home. My nanny, everybody was just in the house. We were like, why are we all here at the same time? I said, you know, you just balance. So you carry her one minute, you carry her, everybody just carries her. So it's just a beautiful thing. It's a I beautiful thing. But I'm, I'm not going to lie. Some are more important. Yeah. And that is my family. That I is like my daughter, that. my husband, and my family is more important than anything on this. On Brilliant. This uh, on the issue of family, mm. uh, there was a recent issue, debacle with your mom. Yeah. Um, you said you were going to resolve it. Are yeah. you on good terms with your mom now? I've always been on good terms with my mom. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, you know. I I have, I, I mean, my I have another mom here who yeah. I grew up with, do you understand? So, and I have, I had my, of course, my birth mom who is in the UK, yes. do you understand? And so there's always a miscommunication. Um, growing up with someone that you know more always has, there's always that thing where, but I love my mom and she knows it. And as much as I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up with her, I tried as much as possible to balance things. And so you always have right. people saying things that you're not supposed to say to them, you know, but um, I'm working on it so much because we've always been on amazing terms. And that's the funny thing, you know, it's just somebody saying something that didn't sit well with her. Okay. But honestly, my mom and I are super cool my mom okay. is so young my yeah. mom is 48 wow. you know so when i'm rolling with my she's mom she's a hip grandma she's hip like when i'm rolling with her, everybody thinks we're sisters and in fact people always think we're sisters you know and i that remember is. in the uk sometimes when i visit here and i'm you know i'm strolling my little brothers people would ask me you know if it's your daughter i'm like yeah that's my daughter and that's my auntie i would say that's my sister i call my mom my sister and we even sound the same when I pick a phone call, a phone, and my mom picks you, you can't even tell who's speaking. Nice. You know, so we're so alike in so many ways. And you know, it's unfortunate that certain things like this had to come out, but one hundred percent is an issue that is for the house to resolve and I am resolving it and it's it's looking good i so love that fine. now why did you decide that you were going to go into the beauty industry i would have assumed that perhaps you would have set up a, a studio studio or a music <laughs> school or something yes. why decide to branch into the beauty and uh wellness industry okay um first of all i definitely have a, you know in in the pipeline to do um a studio nice you know, okay Brilliant. You know, something i'm always going to do um that is part of me is music it can never go away so it's going to happen However, the kind of studio that I want to do is capital intensive. Yes. You know, it's huge, it's huge budget because it's going to be an ultra modern studio where there's everything there. Wow. You know, I know there's what well, talks of it recently that people wanted to do that. I know Marco Kweku Manti really wanted to do that. I know it didn't go too well for him because a lot of people were not, you know, all in tune with all it. All in yeah. tune with it, but it's huge. I've thought about it where imagine it's in the remote somewhere where there's songwriters there. People go there and they can Sorry. chill for a week or even a month. There's rooms there. People can just sleep there because creativity needs a lot of, you know, it needs sound mind where there's a restaurant, where there's different sorts of studios. So you go there and you feel like you're home, you know, in a rush to go, you know. And so when I heard him, I think I heard him on radio yesterday, I said, this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, it's such a good idea. People travel to um, Sweden and Swedish somewhere. Just to get the to right kind of sound, sound out. Yeah. And they do it. And they, 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 they employ songwriters and say, you know what, go and stay in for two months, go somewhere and then just relax there and just write me songs. And we can do it here. But we don't have the facility. Mm. So that's something I wanted to do. Nice. So I just thought, you know what? What is the next thing that I like the most? I explore a lot. When I travel, I like to go for massages and Ooh, facials. Yes. And <laughs> so it's something that I do. My husband and I, he actually was part of it as well. He would go to every mass because he likes, you know, we like, we like um, wellness and, you know, relaxation. And so that was the next thing in line. I thought about this a long time. So I just thought, because this is capital intensive and I need millions and millions of dollars to do it. Let me start with something that I like to do as well, okay. which is health, well-being, beauty. And beauty now that's is, a, is, a is a huge industry. industry. Yeah. So I just thought, let me branch into that. And that's why I went there. Because when you love something, you make it look good. And so it's evident when you go to the spa. You know, I want it to look good. I want people to feel good about themselves when they walk out. And that's why I decided to go there. Now, as a business owner, yes. what are some of the key things you've learned? What are some of the speed bumps as well you had to navigate as a business owner? Well, well, some of the speed bumps, before I go to, you know, the things that I've learned, the speed bumps is that, you know, you can never satisfy one a customer. Mm. You know, you can never, you want to satisfy a company, but 100%, it cannot be 100% all the time. Okay. Um, there's always, but there's always, 
you know, a customer is always right. Okay, you yes. Know, people <laughs> always forget that, that a customer is always right. You know, um, I learned to be very patient as well, especially being in the service industry. Yes. You need to be so much so patient because you would have done something to your satisfaction and thought, oh my God, these nails are so beautiful. But in the eye of the customer, it's like, ah. not beautiful. No, that is where you, you <laughs> learn how to be patient. And as a businesswoman, that if you want to keep your customers coming, you need to learn how to satisfy them mm. the most that you can. Do you understand? So I, I have learned so much from it. The dance is this that I was going to dance, but I switched it. <laughs> it's fine. So um, I, I realized also that, you know, now when you're in a space where you have to employ people all the time, you know, you people come with different characters yes. and different attitude towards yes. work and everything. Now that's a point where you need to learn how to manage people properly. Totally. So the manage, managing people is not a joke. You know, so our managers out there, you're doing a good job, especially creative people that go are crazy. You know, they're doing so well. Um, so I've gone to a phase where, you know, people come in, you know, employees, I employ people, they have to go, I have to do another person, they have to go and all that. But now, um, it's been, what I learned most is trying to keep them all together. Hmm. You know, the ability of a leader, you know, to, to be, you know, as a leader, you need to, you need to be led, you know, you need to listen to your people very well. And so now I've learned how to listen, you know, so that everybody's together. I've learned how to 100% serve my customers and make them happy. I love that. I love that. I love that. Now back into the music. The new single, mm -hmm. Yes, I Do. Yeah. Which I think is going to be like one of the hottest <laughs> wedding songs. I, yes. I, I, I'm definitely going to have that played at my wedding. But, uh, tell me about doing such a collaboration with Tiwa Savage. Okay. Now, I mean, Tiwa is a big sister. You know, she's, you know, arguably the biggest, if not one of the biggest, you know, uh, female artists in Africa right now. Right. Um, making waves all over the world. Um, you know, as a as an artist in the industry, I mean, we colleague, we've been chatting for a while. However, we've never thought about collaborations, honestly. Uh -uh. No, we didn't. We didn't ever talk about that. But I sat back and I recorded a song, and I said, "This song is definitely going to be a wedding song." However, I want somebody else on it. You know, somebody that could help us sell it on the other side as well. You know, when I say as Ghana music, you know, sell it on the other side as well. So, I sent a message to her and I said, yo, should we just do a song together? I think we should do a song. She said, send it to me, send me something. Nice. Yeah. And that was that was it. So I sent it to her and she liked it, took her best out, did her own thing there, sent it and brought it. She's busy. She's moving around with Universal, Sinus Universal now. And so she doesn't have much time. But when she got to Lagos, she called me and said, well, let's shoot the video. Because she sent me a schedule and said, yeah. I'm in Lagos this time, let's shoot the video. We shot the video and it was seamless. You know, Brilliant. and it's my first female collaboration ever. Wow. You know, so, yeah. And I guess as well, most, yeah, she's done, you know, with a, a group. A few, yeah. You know, she's done with a group, you know, the whole Maven crew. Where but DJ to do a one-on? On. On wow. One. She's never done before. So, Brilliant. Yeah, this is our first collab. And that is why I feel like this song has carried so much spirit. It carries so much, especially. Um, and, and it's a sort of, a sort of, um, it's, it, it's a learning experience, a learning process for female artists, you know. I feel like it's going to bring all of us together, honestly. Honestly. I love it. I love that. Now, um, still with Yes, I Do, uh, and I, I think it's an absolutely brilliant song. Should we see maybe a perform? Okay. Are you going to do something for Chris? Are you going to do a concert, a Becca theme <laughs> concert? Are we going to have it's that again? It's in talks. I mean, I'm definitely going to do something for the women. I like it. You know, sometime in, this, in November, you know, before things start, you know, something I'm planning already is going to be for. As women, hey. like it's gonna be for as women, it's gonna be themed, it's gonna be fun and exciting. I'm definitely gonna do that. I don't know about a concert yet, okay. you know. However, we're in talks, you know. Ah. There's people that have approached me because they want us to do something in December, so hopefully, we're gonna do something in December. Like if that. not at all, it's gonna be January before people start going to work, so it's definitely, you know, work. So yes, on. I do. is is a prelude to a whole album that's going to be it coming out. It is a out. prelude to a whole album. Tell me the title. What what can we expect on the album? And do you have a name for it yet? I'm not going to lie. I don't have a name for the album okay. yet exactly because what I do is that I have over thirty something songs that I have to choose from, and nice. I'm going to put just twelve on it. You know, so who how yeah. job? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually you theme a song, you theme the album. Um, and just bring up an abstract name, something that is not involved at all. Sometimes it's one of the songs on it, like some of my songs, Sugar, You Lie to Me, and all that. Um, I don't know about this yet because I haven't chosen the songs for the album yet. Okay, but so I we will, can look at 2020? 2020, definitely. It's early. It was supposed to be this year. 
-huh. But a lot of has come up, a lot of conversations have come up, you know, so, and it's looking good. So the woman is just holding a little bit until next year. And that's what we're holding on. So, yes, um, driving license with Shatawale. It's and out, this yes. One, you okay. know, yes, I do. It's all, you know, um, an interlude going towards the album. Yes. Now, who are you on your list for future collaborations? Who are your bucket list for collaborations? Uh, Which artists in Ghana and perhaps across the world? In Ghana, um, I think most of the people that I wanted to do songs with, I have. Okay. However, I want to, I think that some of the young ones, the girls, you know, I, th I feel like a few of them could do, we could do something together because right. that would be so beautiful. Yeah. Because I, I, I feel like if the women come together, we, we always do magic and it's always Girl wrong, power. whether they like it or not, yeah. you know, and they know it, you know. So, but on my bucket list, I would want to do a song with Daddy Lumba. Okay, I like 100%. it. 100%. Like, I want to do a song with Daddy Lumba. That would be a fire He's song. My, I love him so much. Like, I grew up listening to him, doing his dance moves and everything. So, <laughs> so I definitely would want to do a song with him here. Outside of Ghana mm -hmm. as well. Shatawili went ahead and did a song with my Beyonce, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, so he, could we already? <laughs> he's keen already. So, um, but there's one person that I love so much and I've always loved, which is... Um, Alicia Keys, Ooh. and I definitely wouldn't mind doing a beautiful ballad with her. That definitely. would be like I can see it in my mind right yeah. now. That'd be amazing. Beautiful ballad, yeah. I, if yes. I'm supposed to do any of those rap things and all that, um, I think I'm going to go for Jay Z right away. Oh yes, I'm going to fast and pray yes, on these names, and then we shall do a collaboration. Yes. We're going to go on another quick break. When we come back, even more with amazing Becca right here on Hall of Fame. Hello, welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And I am Omaru Sanda Amadou. Hello and welcome to the City Newsroom live on City TV. My name is Bumer And my name is Bobier Osei. Coming up. Every weekday at 8 p.m., City Newsroom brings you analysis of the major news stories of the day. In-depth, comprehensive and researched. It's one hour of local news from 8 to 9 p.m. It's the City Newsroom on City TV. You're tuning into Hall of Fame. I'm having an amazing conversation with the one and only Becca. She's in the hot seat right here on the show. Now, on to um, some of the craziest things you've heard about yourself. Mm. What, 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 what is on the list of some of the craziest things you've ever heard of you, about yourself in the media domain? Mm. Oh, AJ, I'm not going to lie. I don't remember. <laughs> There's so many of them. And I don't... I honestly don't remember negativity. Yeah. Honestly, that's the thing about me. There's so many things, but I'm just looking for top of the list, top of the list, top of the list. What is he saying? All my surgeries. It's okay, you can say that. <laughs> All my surgeries. <laughs> All my surgeries after birth. I just did a liposuction. Okay, they say that. Oh, wow. I just did a liposuction. Especially after I met with the girls and I showed my tummy and it's all six packs. Six packs I've been working out of. <laughs> <laughs> I work out, say. Eh? <laughs> you know, so um, I've turned white. <laughs> no, so how I'm do you. Brony. Do, how, okay, so uh, with those rumors such as you've done surgeries, uh, oh. you, you're lightening your skin, yeah. like, how do you respond to that? Honestly, I barely respond to those things, okay. especially via social media. I, I will not even mind you. Trust me, I won't even mind you at all because it doesn't change anything about me, honestly. If somebody wants to go through surgery, it's your prerogative. Do you understand? I haven't done it, you know, because I mean, my lifestyle requires that I'm always active. I'm True. always working out. I'm doing things. So if anybody knows me, that is my lifestyle. I, I work out. I eat well. It doesn't mean I don't eat my fufu. I, uh, I love fufu, please, guys. I love it, but everything that I do is minimal. I know how to do things. So... Those things don't bother me. Um, I meet people. People see the way I look. Do you understand? They know that I'm not white. Yeah. Do you understand? <laughs> so, um, but some people know you're not. They will still say it. Don't worry. Because some people... Wow. Oh, no, no, no. I know. I That I know because 
sometimes when I do a bit of a set, I can tell that some people just want a story. They saw you, they know you, they've actually met you, hello, but then they still say that. So, but AJ, trust me, okay, I cannot be bothered mm. about what people say. No, 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 no. Constructive. If it makes sense, I take it. But one of them, when you know that they're just pinching it because they just want to distract people of something, that doesn't bother me at all. I just look forward and I keep moving and moving and moving. I it like that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I like that. That's a mantra we should all adopt. No, 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 at all. It may be painful and sometimes irritating. And it's cyber bully. Yeah. It just becomes too much. So I can imagine a girl who is just turned teenager, you know, and you're talking about how her nose is like or how her ear is like or, you know, they, they, they dissect you so much, you know, to the the minimal least degree, no, you know, atom that you just think they don't even know me. You can bully me, but please don't bully that young girl that is out there. Yeah. Because, you know, she doesn't deserve it. True. Just leave her, let her live your life and live your life as well. I love Do you that. Understand? Yeah. It's not worth it at the end of the day. We're all human. Yeah. You know, so I can control it, but she cannot do it. She cannot, she cannot, she's probably like crying at home right now thinking, why are they doing this to me? And thinking about a lot of things that she wants to do to herself, which is not worth it. So... My message to them. Some celebrities have a love-hate relationship with social media. Are, are you, do you fall in that particular category? Oh, I do, yeah. I love and hate social media. <laughs> I love it. I love it, hate it. I, actually, I love it more than hate it. You know, sometimes I hate it more, but usually I love it. You know, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't make a difference for me. Because you know what? Um, social media is a good avenue. It's helped us so much, you know, because everything now is virtual. Everything now is via internet. Everything, everything, you know. We cannot, all these apps we're talking about, it's, it's not existing. Mm. It will not exist if it's not for internet, you know. So social media is an in thing now. You know, your music flies everywhere. People get to know you in, in Asia when they haven't even met you before because yep. of social media. And so it's a love-hate thing. People use it for the wrong things, which I don't think is right. Do you know what However, and that is where we need to educate our daughters train our daughters to let them understand that they are they are too good they're too unique yeah you understand so that they're not really pushed by what people say about them self-confidence that is one thing i'm going to teach my daughter do you understand that listen it doesn't matter what anybody says about you if you know yourself and you understand what you're made of you can't be bothered like you know that. so it all starts from home like because that. right now the age of social media is not going to change right now we, i'm sure it's going to be a certain time where you can actually just touch somebody via internet via your phone so, you know, so it's going to just get, you know, it's going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we set up to us to train our children, to train our girls, you know, especially. And, and the boys are there as well. Yep. So they don't know how to, you know, believe in themselves, deal with themselves and not just forget about all that negativity. Absolutely. Yes. Now, uh, what has been the biggest sacrifice you've made to be Becca, the brand? Well, th we just spoke about it. You know, the biggest sacrifice is, you know, I'd have to make is 100% not, you know, trying to speak out. Okay. You know, just letting it be. Okay. Because sometimes you want to speak out. Just let because him, sometimes let him have not, it. <laughs> majority of the time, it's not who they say you are. And you just want to tell them that, you know what, this is not who I am. You're describing a wrong person. Do you understand? It's such a huge sacrifice. Because, you know, I just feel like, you know, they are sending the wrong message to people who don't even know you. Mm. So people get to know you, knowing all the negative sides about you when they haven't taken their own personal time to get to know you. Mm. You know, so that's a huge sacrifice for me. Sometimes you wish you could just say, go to everybody's door and knock and say, this is not me, or look at me, or this is not me, look at me, but you're not going to do it. And, and the thing is that, listen, as a woman, you grow up looking beautiful every time. You yeah. need to take care of yourself, do you understand? You need to um, try and take care of everything about you. Okay, so people should not think that you're going to look the same way you used to look 15, 13 years ago when they got to know you in the industry. You need to look good. I like that. Mm. Now, uh, finally, on a light note, what was your first job, your first ever paying job in your life? Paid job? Oh, I worked at Sainsbury's in the okay. UK. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, customer service. Paper or bag? <laughs> Paper or bag. <laughs> <laughs> what is customer the most... Customer service. Uh, oh, so you were the customer service yeah, person. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was always talking, yeah. <laughs> Would AJ report to the customer service desk, please? Ah, <laughs> nice. Um, what has been the biggest or most expensive purchase you've ever made? Uh, my, my houses. Okay. Yes. What's the budget? I said my houses. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> ka -ching. Ka -ching. What, what is the budget, you know? In millions. Uh, yeah. Because they're worth millions, yeah. Wow, woo. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> when I grew up, I want to be like you. <laughs> so I want to be like everyone. I want to be like my dad. <laughs> okay. So quickly off the top of my head, I'm going to mention a few things. Okay. And just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. 
Uh, music. Becca. Ah, I like. Uh, social media. Um, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Concerts. Concerts. Um, girl talk. Ah, nice. <laughs> Tour. Tour? Yeah. Um, UK. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you did. You had... You had you were on a bus. You yes. were on a red bus. Yes. Oh, wait, how did you make that happen? <laughs> well, diversity. <CB> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, Afrobeat. Um, Ghana. Okay. High life. Glass Green. of wine. Romance. Oh, yes. <laughs> and finally, family. My daughter. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Love. And on that note, thank you so much for coming through, Becca. Thank you for that. That was an amazing me. conversation. It was. I yeah. had so much fun. I, I'm glad you did because <laughs> I certainly did as well. And I'm glad you did at yes. home too. I hope you did, honestly, because it was a fantastic conversation with the one and only songstress, entrepreneur, mother, wife, superwoman, Becca, right here on Hall of Fame. It's been exciting. Special thanks to First Choice for my lovely hair, Yvonne for my jewelry, and special thanks to you, for watching. A big thank you to my production team, Angela Dake on production, uh, Paula Mensodoku on directing, my amazing camera crew, and everyone that's made it happen, especially uh, to you for being tuned in over the last 60 minutes. I'll be back your way next week for another exciting edition of Hall of Fame. Until then, keep watching City TV.